Having a big name speaker for your event really sounds like the solution to make your event a success, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that's wrong thinking and I've got the reasons why. Stay tuned. It was the early 2000s and I was working for an arm of our organization located in the Washington DC area. By that time the organization already had had 10 years of very successful fundraising dinners. All of those dinners included a compelling speaker but not a big name speaker. However, even though the attendance and the giving was solid, made up mostly of people who strongly supported the organization, the advisory board wasn't satisfied with the attendance and put some pressure on me to get a big name speaker to rocket the attendance. Catching me at a weak moment, I agreed. We secured a very famous Washington Times best-selling author to be our speaker. You'd instantly know this person if I mentioned his name. Prior to that year, we were averaging about 200 to 250 guests and netting over $100,000. With this big name, registration soared to over 500. Leading up to the night of the dinner, the board's idea appeared to be a success. Our strategy remained the same. We provided complimentary meals to ensure everyone who wanted to come could come. That night of the dinner, I mingled with the attendees at the reception. In particular, I remember meeting two men who, hearing of our dinner on the speaker's website, took a private plane to D.C. to see the speaker. I was so intrigued that I took note of their names to see how large their gifts were going to be. Well, the speaker was compelling, but he also went long. At the end of the night, we grossed $108,000. And if you remember prior to that, we netted approximately $100,000 from 250 guests. When I evaluated the expenses, enormous speaker's fee, and 250 extra meals, we netted far less than ever before. And those two men, take a guess how much they gave combined. Yep, if you said zero, you'd be absolutely correct. I guess they spent all their money on fuel for their plane. That cemented my prior convictions regarding the usefulness and benefit of a big name speaker. Here's why I don't like a big name speaker. Reason number one, people care more about the speaker than they do the organization. One of my favorite phrases about event attendance is, I'd rather have 250 people who love us than 500 who could care less about us. When you have a big name speaker at your dinner, guests come to hear the speaker and oftentimes can care less about your organization. The speaker is what drives the attendance and gets people in the seats. They sit through the program waiting to hear the speaker and all the successes and accomplishments of the organization are completely ignored. I've also found that the minute the speaker is done, guests rush out to the bathroom or worse, out to the parking lot to get in their cars. After five very successful years with compelling and relevant speakers addressing the mission of the organization, a nonprofit leader, a close friend of mine, was talked into having a former Taliban leader as keynote speaker because his story was so powerful. And it was. But it also had nothing to do with the mission of the organization hosting the dinner. And when the speaker was done, he mentioned that he'd be selling his books out in the lobby. Well, half the audience made a beeline to the book table right when the appeal was being made. Crickets in the room. Reason number two, the success or failure of the event becomes dependent on the speaker. Over the years, I've seen organizations become very dependent on the speaker and getting the right big name speaker. They wait and delay all in an effort once again to get the right speaker. Marketing and advertising materials and invitations are delayed all to get that right speaker. When an event has a compelling speaker, invitations and marketing can go out and are not dependent on, on the speaker, but the reputation of the organization. And that's the right place to be. The fact that you had a good speaker is icing on the cake. You can sell the fact that you have a very good communicator after you sell the outstanding organization and all that it's doing. You could say, we want you to attend this dinner to hear all that's happening with XYZ organization. Oh, and by the way, John Smith or Mary Smith is gonna be the keynote speaker. I want people to walk out at the end of the dinner saying, wow, I had no idea who Mary Smith was before I came, but she was amazing. I'm so glad I came. 
I can't tell you how often a big name speaker is built up only to become a letdown. A sports nonprofit used a former Major League Baseball player as a keynote speaker a few years ago. Everyone came to hear stories of him as a player. Unfortunately, the first words out of his mouth were, my years as a player were the worst in my life, and frankly, if I don't say another word about baseball, it'll be too soon. And he proceeded to talk about a subject that was irrelevant for most of the guests. Needless to say, he was considered a flop. And when you become dependent on a speaker and they are late or don't show up, it makes things worse. I spent 30 years living in the Washington, D.C. suburbs and had countless politicians speak for our dinner. Members of Congress are notorious for either being late for events or for not showing up at all. In their defense, they're at the mercy of a floor vote, and that vote can happen at any time, and they must be on the floor when the vote is called. I had a member call me 10 minutes before an event was to start to tell me he had to cancel to be on the Hill for a floor vote. I scrambled and found a board member willing to replace him. Five minutes after the dinner, but before the program started, he walks up and says, hey, I'm here and I have good news and bad news. I can speak, but it has to be right now because I need to rush off to vote. So I had to decide, use him then at the worst time in the program for the message or use the board member. Well, I used him immediately, but regretted it because instead of the program growing in momentum and peaking at his message, the event peaked right then and went downhill from that point on. And it definitely affected giving negatively. Being dependent on a big name speaker can cripple you. Reason number three, it creates an unhealthy competitive spirit. Having a big name speaker is addictive. When you have your first big name speaker, you have to have another, and then another, and then another, and every time it has to be bigger. It seems that your next big name speaker has to top the last one, or you won't feed the monster. That feeling that your guests won't come back unless your next speaker is bigger than your last. Two decades ago, a local Houston arm of an international nonprofit organization got into an incredibly unhealthy trap. This was a faith-based nonprofit, and their first dinner speaker was the founder organization who was a legend in the Christian community. That wasn't a bad start. However, the large crowd fed the board's desire to have the next speaker be a big name. That year, they had a very famous pastor in Houston. The larger crowd the next year led them to Susan Baker, the wife of former Reagan Treasury Secretary James Baker. The next year, they had to top that and got Secretary Baker to come in. A few big name speakers in between brought them to recently retired former U.S. Vice President Dan Quayle. I remember Vice President Quayle's talk like it was yesterday. It could have been given the week before to the local Kiwanis Club, and in fact, it probably was. All that changed was that the name of the organization was sprinkled in a few times. I didn't blame him. No one bothered to ask for an original message. And his fee was astronomical, cutting into the net proceeds. But he fed the monster, and the board had to have someone bigger the next year. I remember vividly, it was 2002, a non-presidential year, but a congressional election year. Being in Houston, few board members had connections with the Bush family, and they managed to get a commitment from the only person bigger than the former vice president, the current president himself, George W. Bush. It was an amazing get. Ten days before the dinner, the nonprofit leader got a call from the White House. Being a congressional election year, President Bush had to make himself available to members of his party who were in heated election battles. President Bush had to cancel his engagement with this nonprofit to attend an event in the district of a struggling member. The board unanimously felt that without their golden goose, they couldn't possibly ask people to come out. And with that, there went the 250000 in anticipated revenue. The local organization lost its good reputation in the community, never did another dinner, and was never relevant again. Reason number four. Big name speakers rarely know much about your organization. I mentioned earlier that Dan Quayle's speech was canned and only sprinkled in the name of the organization a few times. Well, that's not unique to Dan Quayle. That's typical for big name speakers. Rarely do you have a big name speaker who knows much about your organization. Few will carve out the time to come in early to get to know your organization. But even that isn't enough. 
Instead, a compelling speaker usually is someone who has experienced your organization and mission, strategies and program, and has firsthand knowledge of you. They can speak not only as an expert, but often as a product or success story of your organization. A speaker who can't expertly share the mission, vision, and values of your organization is the wrong speaker. Your speaker should take all that was heard previously in the program and wrap it up in a nice little bow to set up the appeal. Big name speakers rarely set up the appeal. They may give a good or even a motivating message that makes you say, wow, I want to hear that person again. But don't set up the audience to say, wow, I want to give to that organization. The difference is focus. One is focused on delivering their message while the other is focused in on delivering the message of the organization. Reason number five, big name speakers almost always go long. If you followed any of my videos, you know that shorter is better, not only for the program, but for the keynote speaker. You want people clamoring for more, not saying, oh, when is this person going to be done? I always recommend 19 minutes or less. That's a proven optimal time. I say 19 because speakers, when they hear 20, they think, ah, 20, 25, 30, whatever it takes. But when they hear 19 minutes, they know that you're serious about time. And you should be. Every minute your program goes over two hours and 15 minutes from welcome to goodbye, you lose $1,000 a minute. Big name speakers charge big fees, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But because they charge big fees, they want you to get your money's worth. I appreciate that, but they usually start with 40 minutes and work up from there to an hour to 90 minutes or more. Now that's fatigue. The leader of a sports ministry told me that they had a big name speaker for a weeknight dinner and was already behind schedule when he got on. He swore he wouldn't go longer than 40 minutes, which would I, I would have had a problem with anyway. He ended up going 90 minutes and the dinner didn't get done until 11.30 p.m. Needless to say, there were few people left to give when the appeal happened. And speakers know that it's harder to write a 20-minute message than a 40-minute message, so they get lazy and they go for the easy route. I had a very big name author and speaker tell me once, Jim, I have to go 40 minutes because my content only works on the audience if it's 40 minutes long. Trust me, the audience will hang on every word. And I've seen him speak many times, and he's right. But then I asked him, that may be true, but what will the audience be doing immediately after your 40-minute message? With that, he responded, well, I hope they'll be giving. To which I replied, they can't because they'll either be in the bathroom or in the parking lot headed home because they have exceeded their capacity, their bladder, or time allotted for their babysitter. To his credit, his next words after a pregnant pause were, then I'll go 19 minutes. And he did. I could work with him almost every day. Reason number six, the speaker's fee is usually astronomical. A big name speaker almost always comes with a high price tag, and I have no problem with that. I have no problem with them making their living as a speaker, and I have no problem with someone paying that price. I just don't want that someone to be me. Not once in the times I've paid high speaker fees have I ever come out saying, wow, that fee was worth it. Surprisingly, the only time I came close was when I used Jeff Foxworthy for a nonprofit adoption agency. His normal fees are in the multiple tens of thousands, but for this organization, he reduced his fee to $5,000. And he was a consummate professional in this case. I was happy to pay that reduced fee. He started with some side splitting humor, and in an instant that only a professional can do, he made it deadly serious as he addressed the importance of finding homes for kids from troubled circumstances, and it was terrific, but no one could get him for only $5,000 today. Many speakers I've paid $5,000 for left me disappointed, and frankly, speakers' fees go into the tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands. I'm a big fan of Tim Tebow, but he's over 100000 and I'd never recoup or justify that cost. I've even joked that Tim Tebow's mom is $50,000. Those big fees eat into your net profit, and for all reasons mentioned just above, a big name fee isn't worth it. The juice is not worth the squeeze. Reason number seven. They distract from what you're trying to accomplish. I mentioned earlier about the former Taliban leader that essentially distracted the audience with his book offer and led to less people giving that night. 
I've got countless stories like that of speakers who take the focus off the goal for the evening, raise funds and friends for the organization, and focus in, in on themselves instead of the organization. I mentioned earlier about the former Taliban leader that essentially distracted the audience with his book offer and led to less people giving that night. I've got countless stories like that of speakers who take the focus off the goal of the evening, which is to raise funds and friends for the organization, and focus it in on themselves or their projects. I've had big name speakers talk so much about themselves or their nonprofit that attendees come up to me to ask how they can get a hold of this person since their organization sounded so great. I wanted to say, hey, remember why you're here? Who, who brought in this big name speaker? Remember us? Well, big name speakers distract with inaccurate or inappropriate messages. And I don't mean inappropriate content, although I've had that happen, unfortunately. I mean content that is totally irrelevant to the mission, vision, and values of the organization. I've heard big name speakers come to speak on a topic, but unknowingly advocate for a position that is diametrically opposed to the mission of the organization that invited them. On one hand, having a big name speaker sounds so good. If you're planning an event, don't you want a lot of people to attend? Of course, but you want the right people to attend. And for all my reasons mentioned earlier, you will not have the right people at your event if it's built on the foundation of a big name speaker. That foundation will quickly crumble. A successful event revolves around a compelling message and mission and an understanding and agreement of not only your mission, but your direction. And the speaker should, as I stated previously, wrap up the highlights of everything mentioned earlier and serve it to the audience in a nice bow wrapped tight. Meaning that they get people in the audience to the point where they're ready to give. I've been on both sides of the equation, the one setting up the appeal and the one receiving the setup. And it's so nice when all you have to do is explain how to give, piggybacking off the call to action mentioned by the keynote speaker. Big name speakers don't give you a successful dinner. A compelling message and vision does that. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below if you have used a big name speaker before and if that person was worth the price you paid, delivered a message that brought in more than you paid them. Your comments might help this community determine who to have as their next speaker. If you could, do me a favor. Let me know that you got this far in the video by typing the word big in the comments section. If you're interested in joining me in making a positive impact on our world and even for eternity, please hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. If you want to find out what to do and say during a presentation, watch this video and raise more money than ever before. And I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.